Hello, and welcome to a video presentation on solving equations containing decimals. Here's what you'll learn. How to solve one-step equations that contain decimals. The goal in solving equations is to find a solution. If your equation contains a variable, a letter, you're trying to solve for the value of that variable. And to solve for a variable, you must isolate the variable. That means we want to get the variable, or letter, all by itself on one side of the equation. Your equation should end up looking like this. The variable equals a number. For example, p equals 16. Now let's solve some examples together. First, g plus 6.38 equals negative 7.1. Let's start by writing down the equation g plus 6.38 equals negative 7.1. Now, in order to isolate the variable g, we need to cancel out all the numbers on the same side of the equation with our letter. In this case, we have to get rid of just 6.38. What operation is being performed with 6.38? Did you say addition? If you did, you're right. The 6.38 is being added to G. So, to remove the 6.38 from that side, we need to perform the opposite, or inverse operation, using 6.38, which is subtraction. So, let's subtract 6.38 from both sides to keep our equation balanced. I'll subtract 6.38 on the left, and subtract 6.38 on the right. Now, the 6.38 is canceled out on the left-hand side, because when we do that math, we end up with 0. And on the right side, negative 7.1 minus negative 6.38 is negative 13.48. Now, if you don't know how I just got that answer, and you aren't familiar with adding and subtracting decimals, you might want to check out my video titled Adding and Subtracting Decimals at some point, because I'm not going to go into the details of that in this video. Now, the left side only contains our variable g, so it's now been isolated on the left side. And the right side only has the number negative 13.48. So that means g equals negative 13.48, and that's our answer. Now let's solve y minus 10.7 equals 28.93. First, let's write down the equation. y minus 10.7 equals 28.93. Now in order to isolate the variable y, we have to cancel out 10.7. What operation is being performed with 10.7? The 10.7 is being subtracted from y. So, to remove the 10.7 from that side, we have to perform the opposite, or inverse operation, using 10.7, which is addition. So, let's go ahead and add 10.7 to both sides to keep our equation balanced. I'll add 10.7 on the left, and 10.7 on the right. Now, the 10.7 is canceled out on the left side. When we do that math, that number turns into 0. On the right side, 28.93 plus 10.7 is 39.63. Now, the left side only contains our variable y. It's isolated on the left. And the right side only has the number 39.63. So y equals 39.63 is our answer. Now let's solve r divided by negative 5.4 equals 6.3. Again, start by writing down the equation. r over negative 5.4 equals 6.3. In order to isolate the variable r, we need to cancel out the negative 5.4. Now, what operation is being performed with negative 5.4? It may not be obvious, but if you read the left side of the equation, it tells us r is being divided by negative 5.4. So, to remove the negative 5.4 from that side, 
we need to perform the opposite or inverse operation using negative 5.4, which is multiplication. So let's multiply both sides by negative 5.4 to keep our equation balanced. Now the negative 5.4's on the left cancel, just like that. Now, don't make the mistake of thinking that we had negative 5.4 times negative 5.4 on the left. We don't. It ended up being a division problem. We actually had negative 5.4 divided by negative 5.4. And let me take a second to show you why. We can write the negative 5.4 we just inserted on the left as a fraction by putting a 1 underneath it, since negative 5.4 divided by 1 is still negative 5.4. So let's go ahead and change negative 5.4 to negative 5.4 over 1, and of course we're still multiplying as well. Now it's easier to see why the negative 5.4 cancels. When multiplying fractions, a number in the numerator of one fraction will cancel with the same number in the denominator of another fraction. Just like that. So now, we're left with r over 1, and of course r divided by 1 is just r. So we have now isolated our variable r on the left side of the equation. On the right side now, all we have to do is multiply 6.3 and negative 5.4 to finish the problem. First, ignore the signs. Let's do 6.3 times 5.4. That gives us a 34.02. Now if you aren't familiar with multiplying decimals, again, check out my video titled multiplying decimals. I'm not going to go into the details of that in this lesson. Now figure out the sign on your answer. Well, we know a positive number times a negative number gives us a negative number. So we'll have negative 34.02 on the right. So r equals negative 34.02 is our answer. Now let's solve 8 equals 3.2a. Again, let's write down the equation, 8 equals 3.2a. Now, in this case, our variable a is on the right side of the equal sign, and that's okay. It really doesn't matter what side the variable is located on. We can solve it or isolate it on either side. But for consistency, I'm going to move it to the left side. And let me show you how we do that. Take everything from the right side and move it to the left side. Now, don't change any operations or any signs on the terms. Just take everything as it is and slide it over to the other side. So 3.2a moves to the left, bring the equal sign down, and then take everything from the left side and move it to the right side. Just like that, and we have the exact same equation. It's as simple as that. Now, in order to isolate the variable a, we know we have to cancel the 3.2 that's with it. What operation is being performed with the 3.2? If you said multiplication, that's correct. The left side reads as 3.2 times a. So to remove the 3.2 from that side, we need to perform the opposite or inverse operation using 3.2, and that's division. We have to divide both sides by 3.2 to keep the equation balanced. So let's do that. Divide by 3.2 on the left and divide by 3.2 on the right. Now the 3.2 cancels because there's one top and bottom in our fraction on the left, just like that. And all that remains is our isolated variable a, which is exactly what we wanted to get. And on the right, we finish the problem by dividing 8 by 3.2 that gives us 2.5. So a equals 2.5 is our answer. Now let's finish up the lesson with a word problem. Tristan wants to buy a new bicycle that costs $310. If he earns $7.75 per hour at his job, how many hours must he work to make enough money to purchase the bicycle? Well, first of all, we need an equation to solve. 
The problem tells us the total cost is $310. Now we know in math total means equals. So we can start creating our equation by putting down equals 310. Now Tristan is paying for a new bicycle with his job that pays him $7.75 each hour. So we can multiply 7.75 times the number of hours he needs to work and we're going to call that H in order to pay for the bicycle. So let's use H for the number of hours he needs to work to make $310 and we'll put 7.75 H on the left hand side of our equation. Now in order to solve for the number of hours he needs to work we have to isolate that variable H all by itself on the left side of the equation. That means we have to cancel out 7.75 because it's on the same side of the equation with the H. Since the 7.75 and H are being multiplied, we use division to cancel 7.75. So divide both sides by 7.75. Now on the left, 7.75 cancels on top and bottom, leaving just our H on the left hand side of the equation. And on the right, 310 divided by 7.75 is 40. So there you have it, H equals 40. Or Tristan needs to work 40 hours to purchase the bicycle. Congratulations, you've learned how to solve one-step equations that contain decimals.